So in part one of this presentation, we discussed how the 3D printing revolution is enhancing people's lives and bettering society as a whole. We're gonna continue on that track of thought in this part of the presentation, but we're also going to be diving into the dark side and the negative effects of 3D printing as well. So it should be an interesting one. Stay tuned. So before even jumping into the amazing capabilities of 3D printed houses, I want to mention one thing that you're bound to run into when reading about 3D printing or researching 3D printing topics, and that is the term additive manufacturing. Please bear in mind that additive manufacturing is synonymous with 3D printing. It's just another fancy way of saying 3D printing. Now that I got that off my chest, let's get to the really interesting stuff and look at these companies on the forefront of building 3D printing homes. These homes that you see right here are 3D printed in less time, utilizing less material, less manual labor, and using more environmental friendly methods than the traditional way of building homes. This 50 diameter dome was printed in 14 hours by MIT. Italy's Big Delta 3D prints durable homes from dirt, and we're actually going to see a video of this in a second. Apris Core 3D printed this house in 24 hours, and I'm also going to show you guys a video of how this is done. And this cozy Ukrainian 380 square foot home was printed in just 8 hours. So some of these homes are built with dirt and cement, and then rice husks are used for insulation. And with material being one of the most costly aspects of 3D printing, the ability to print with dirt makes it a viable solution for large scale adaptation of these methods in third world countries. And this is excellent news because 150 million people or about 2% of the world's population are homeless and nearly one fifth of the world lacks adequate housing. 3D printing homes is a really promising initiative. So let's take a look at this 3D printed dome being printed. And this is really interesting because what you see here is a time lapse video, so it's sped up, but you can see that 3D printers can be quite large and it's extruding basically dirt. So it's using dirt to build this dome. And then in these gaps at the top of the cylindrical dome, they're filling it with cement and glue and husks for insulation. It's also important to mention that as 3D printing technology becomes cheaper and cheaper, more places will be able to afford this type of machinery that takes away the really, really grueling hard work from workers, and then more homes can be produced using this technology in less time. And here we can see workers putting on finishing touches on the 3D printed home. Now let's take a look at Apris Core and their first touted residential house that was 3D printed as well. So this is almost a better example because it's showing you a more complicated shape than the regular cylinder that we were seeing. And then you could see that the finishing touches of paint and windows can be put on with the help of humans. However, the 3D printed technology is what's allowing the base and the foundation of the home to be built. And it's also interesting to see, we're gonna discuss this infill. So I'm gonna pause the video here and show you something interesting. You see, when you look at 3D printed objects, we sometimes think that they're 100% density, which means the material is just filling in the entire object that we're looking at. But in reality, a lot of the pieces are hollow or near hollow, and you can actually gauge and decide how dense you want the inside of the object to be. So as you can see, the finished project really does turn into a really cozy home. And mind you, this was 3D printed in under 24 hours. That's really impressive stuff. So now's a good time to discuss the inside of the 3D printed parts themselves. Many people think, like I mentioned, that they're either hollow or fully dense. However, that's really, really rare because for it to be really hollow, it's easy to break and for it to be 100% filled in means it's gonna be really heavy and you're likely wasting material. So there's a virtual and infinite combination of infill density and types that you can choose to be inside of the object 
and this depends on its desired purpose. Here you see an example of density. So at 10% density, you see that there's a lot more empty space. 30% it's a lot more filled in and 50% is a lot more dense. It almost looks like solid, but actually it's only 50% material and 50% space. Now, these types of infills are kind of similar, it's squares and squares and really much smaller squares. Whereas here, you can see that the infill types can really vary a lot. Uh, the layout, the design of the infill, you pretty much specify to the desired outcome and what you need. So for example, if one believes that their 3D printed object can be dropped or thrown, or they anticipate it will experience impact, then they can make it more dense so that it's harder to break. If the object is desired to be very light, then the infill can be minimal. And the infill type likely depends on where the pressure is going to be applied. So you can actually apply physics here and decide that if pressure is applied this way, then there should be more of a support here. And you can toy around with it. Once you send it to the 3D printing software, you'll have a lot of features where you can toggle density and infill type. Now let's switch gears for a second and let's jump into these real life supercars with impressive capabilities that Batman might even ditch the Batmobile for. 3D printed technology helps to make unique shapes a possibility and also allows for the material to be more lightweight, aerodynamic and sturdy, helping these cars have specs that traditional cars simply cannot compete with. So take a look at this 2017 Divergent 3D Blade and the 2021 Zinger 21C Hybrid. They're gorgeous cars and 3D printing makes car parts the smartest, most optimized way possible using the least amount of materials for the most amount of performance. This ratio is often neglected or not feasible with traditional methods. Optimized parts allow for less waste of materials in our environment. This is the first 3D printed supercar, the 2017 Divergent 3D Blade. It's another example of using 3D printing specifically designed to print parts suitable for a performance vehicle which can be lightweight and shaped in very unique ways. The Zinger 21C is a 3D printed $1.7 million hypercar that can do 268 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds. That is crazy impressive. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking to go 268 miles per hour. So let's look at something that's 3D printed that goes a little bit slower, but is really, really cool and nifty. This is the world's first 3D printed motorcycle the AP Works Light Rider. Now, it does cost a lot. It started at 50,000, but competition will inevitably bring the prices down. This Light Rider weighs only 77 pounds and is powered by an electric motor that can reach up to 50 miles per hour. It uses Scal Malloy, a corrosion resistant aluminum alloy often used in robotic parts and aerospace applications. It is described as being almost as strong as titanium. The hollow framework, which includes integrated cables and pipes, helps it weigh 30% less than its competitors. And this touches upon the topic when we were discussing homes that you can print stuff and not use extra material. So it could be very efficient and more sustainable for our environment. The Super Strata C is the world's first unibody carbon fiber composite bike that's custom made to fit the ride style and size of the user. It's made of one solid piece. There are no joints. The frame of the bike is extremely impact resistant, yet remarkably lightweight. And when it came out, it was going for about $2,800. Now let's switch gears once more and talk about something that's a little biology related. Let's talk about tissue support and scaffolding. Think of scaffolding as a temporary structure used to aid in the construction of something. Here's a great and startling example. After losing an ear in a horrific car accident, a Chinese man was able to regrow an ear in his forearm and have it transplanted back onto his head with the help of 3D printing technology. A 3D printed skin expander molding was inserted into the patient's forearm and then the patient's own rib cartilage was inserted under the skin expander and monitored for growth. Once it was fully developed, doctors transplanted the ear 
onto his head. And you could see that right here. This is literally growing on his forearm, and then they transplanted it back to where the ear is supposed to be. Now let's be clear about something. This is not like cloning an ear or having stem cells regrow identical parts. This is scaffolding or molds or supports inserted in and then natural living tissue grows over it and serves as the desired function with the shape intended. And also, it's very important that the scaffolding is from a material that is not rejected by the body. The material used is always one that the body does not recognize as foreign. Otherwise, immune cells would attack the foreign object and cause inflammation, infection, and other undesired problems, which means the body would reject the grown transplanted organ. So in other words, if you use materials that the body does not like and sees them as not their own and sees them as foreign, it'll attack it, it'll cause inflammation, and it will reject it. Now, as you know, a lot of things are tested on rats before they're tested on humans, and an actual esophagus was also successfully 3D printed and implemented in rats in a similar fashion, and it served its function. And this is really promising because as we're able to replicate this in rats, we will be able to replicate it in humans, and a lot of people that are missing body parts and not able to live life fully will be able to restore their quality of life and function as their peers. So in these two examples, we were talking about structures that resemble the intended body part, but it's not the actual natural body part. However, in this next section, we're going to talk about organs that function as organs, which is really exciting news. So in 2019, Tel Aviv University successfully 3D printed a small heart using human tissue that includes vessels, collagen, and biological molecules. This was the first time that a heart was made from human cells and patient-specific biological materials referred to as bioink. The filament was made up of sugars and proteins that can be used for 3D printing of complex tissue models. And right here is kidneys. For those of you who don't recall from biology class, we have two kidneys and their function is to remove waste products and excess fluids from the body. There are many types of kidney diseases and there is also a shortage of kidneys needed for transplants. In America alone, over 90,000 patients are waiting for a kidney transplant. Israel's coal plant biotechnologies and the U.S.-based United Therapeutics Corporation are expanding their partnership to begin the production of actual 3D printed kidneys. These are going to be lifesavers and they're doing excellent work and we are rooting for more companies to take on these initiatives and attempt to solve life-threatening issues and help better the health of our population. So I was planning to cover the dark sides of 3D printing and the negative aspects of 3D printing in part two of this presentation, but I think I'm going to make an entirely separate video that's going to cover a lot of the negatives and the downsides of 3D printing. As you can see here, there's unhealthy air emissions, guns and bomb parts, intellectual property theft, more plastic and junk brought into our environment, 3D printed drug paraphernalia. There's a lot to cover, and so I'm actually going to create a whole new video tailored to just this topic but i appreciate you guys watching and please be subscribed please comment your thoughts please like the video and it'll keep me encouraged to create this next video and then i wanted to create a video on the future of 3d printing i get to rub shoulders and speak with a lot of 3d printing experts and i really wanted to bestow my wisdom through a youtube video and kind of give my thoughts on the future of 3D printing, the implications of 3D printing, and where 3D printing is headed, not only commercially, not only residentially, but in space and elsewhere. It'll be an exciting video, and I really want to make it, but you got to keep me motivated by interacting on these videos. Thanks, guys. I really do hope that you learned something interesting, that there's takeaways from this, that you can discuss some of these things, that you could keep spreading the interest and the love and the enthusiasm for 3D printing. And I also want to take this time to really thank all the students, all the teachers, all the 3D printing enthusiasts that have used our tutorials that we've created in the past. We've surpassed over half a million views across all platforms. And that means a lot to me. That keeps me inspired to keep giving back 
And it also helps me know that I'm putting out quality content because honestly, I'm sitting in a room by myself filming this and sometimes I'm like, is anybody even going to watch this or like this? And the fact that you guys are interacting on it, schools are sharing it around, the emails I get, the messages I get, it keeps me going and it brings a lot of value and self-worth to what I do. So I definitely appreciate it. I wish you guys cherry times, safe times, smooth times, and stay subscribed. There's gonna be some interesting tech content and also motivational entrepreneurship content on here as well. I appreciate you. I'm rooting for you on your respective journey.